All right, so I'm just going to finish on what we know about IBD. Um, this is another really important website. Um, I want everyone to link on this because this is a website um, to an initiative um, done out of UNC um, to develop a registry, a worldwide registry on patients who have inflammatory bowel disease who have tested positive for COVID. We have an international group of uh, physicians and scientists that are working together to map out what's going to happen to people with IBD. Um, and the only way that we are going to know this is if we can report these cases. Now recognize there are some challenges to developing a registry. There may be cases that are underreported. Um, we're relying on physicians to put it in. We may miss cases. We may be looking at the most sickest patients who are then reported on. Um, but to date, if you look at this and if you, you, anyone who goes onto the website, you can see exactly how many cases and, and a bit of a description of those cases. We've had 14 total cases. Again, there are other cases that are reported in, in the media and social media, things like that, but I'm only going to report ones that have been verified within this registry. Of those 14 cases, um, all are adults. Only two have been hospitalized, no ICUs, no death. You can see the distribution of cases across the world. Um, importantly, there's two pediatric registries um, being developed, um, international things to look for um, children with IBD as well. So, what, what about risk factors? So as we talked about before, age is the most important risk factor. Um, but if you also have comorbidities, particularly if you're older, if you have heart and lung disease, you tend to do worse. Um, and we also recognize that if you're immunocompromised, uh, and that's being, for example, being on medications that are immunocompromised, and we're spending a lot of time in our Q&A talking about that, um, then um, you're at increased risk as well. 